So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So this is my small home studio that I've been doing quite a number of instructional videos and if you guys haven't seen those videos, feel free to check out the rest of the videos in this channel because I specialize in basically doing one light portrait photography in a small home studio. But in this particular video, I want to discuss something even more basic, which is the camera settings that you will be needing and the flash settings to create beautiful portraits. Now I have this light set up here and I have my background set up here. And if you want a very detailed instructional video on how this light actually works to create this image, I'll put the link in the description below. But let's focus on my camera settings. The camera that I'm using right now is my Sony A7 Mark IV with a 50mm 1.2 GM lens. But today that's really insignificant because I want to talk about camera settings and how it affects your entire shooting process here inside the studio. You can see we have a lot of ambient light coming from our video lights while we are recording this video. And what we want to do is ask ourselves two things. One is that do we use the existing ambient light or do we remove all existing ambient light? More often than not, in a studio situation like this, if you don't want it to be an environmental portrait, you want most of the light coming from your flash. And that's why you have to remove your existing ambient light. And how do you do that? Well, basically, you do that using your exposure triangle, which is your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, which is basically what I'm showing you now. Whatever it is that you're seeing is a live view of what my camera is seeing. You can see that it's pitch black. In other words, none of the existing ambient light is coming in. But what are my settings? My settings are 1 over 250 f5.6 ISO 100. Look what will happen if I put it at 1.2. If I put it at 1.2, a lot of light is coming in. So in other words, that will actually affect how your image looks like in terms of, uh, well, how the light performs. You could have light here that could be amber or it could be green or different colors. If you allow that to seep in, then it will affect the picture that you are taking. So why is my aperture set at 5.6? Well, I'll get to that first. Number one is that most flash units, such as this one, the Sony F60RM, have a flash sync speed of 1 over 2 50th of a second. Now, the shutter speed for flash photography basically just controls your existing ambient light. But right now, since this flash has a flash sync speed at 1 over 2 50, I have to keep it at 1 over 2 50. Let me show you. I will put now my aperture at f8 or f5.6, or let's put it at f8. So at f8, you can see that you're not seeing anything. But if I adjust my shutter speed and I make it lower, you will see that light is already coming in. So the slower my shutter speed is, the more light I'm allowing to enter, the faster my shutter speed, the less light I have that's entering the sensor. So that's the first thing that I would normally do. I would set my shutter speed at the flash sync speed that is the maximum of my camera and my flash. So what is flash sync speed? It's basically the fastest that you're camera can sync to your flash without getting any banding. You know, those black lines that, you're, that you usually get because when you take a shot, your shutter is already in the shot when the flash fires, therefore you get those black lines. But these new flash units are actually very smart already that if you notice, even if I press it, like now, I can't go over 1 over 250 because that is my flash sync speed. What if I want to go one above 1 over 250? Well, we now have options of high speed sync. What high speed sync does is it allows you to shoot beyond your flash sync speed. So I can turn it on like this and immediately you can see that my shutter speed can go higher than that of 1 over 250. But the downside of that one is we drastically reduce the power of my flash. But why would I want to use high speed sync? Well, let's say for example, again, we stay within our flash sync speed, which is 1 over 250 and I want to shoot a portrait that's wide open 1.2 that I want some bokeh in the shot that I am taking. However, we have a lot of ambient light. So that's where shutter speed controls your ambient light. Now I can bring up with the use of high speed sync, 
bring up my shutter speed higher so that I can control my existing ambient light using my shutter speed. But again, at 1 over 3200 f1.2, this flash unit might actually have a problem in terms of power, which I will demonstrate later and let's see, especially that I, have, I am using a big modifier. Now, ISO. ISO basically affects everything across the board. If I want, let's say, for example, to remove my existing ambient light or at 1 over 250, let's go back. At 1 over 250, I'll turn off high speed sync and I will remove my ambient light now using my aperture. So in case that I don't want to bokeh my subject, I will now bring my aperture down or stop it down to f8 so that the nose up to the ear is very clear. So usually some studio portraits, well most studio portraits that I do, I want to be as clear as possible. So I do shoot between 5.6 to f8. Now at f8, and my flash right now to get f8 will be one fourth power. The problem with these flash units, they are battery operated. So I don't want to be using too much power. So that's when I would increase my ISO. Let's say I could increase my ISO to ISO 400. And at the same time, um, I could bring down my flash power. So that's how it affects it. But technically, if you notice, if I increase my ISO now, I am letting more light come in because ISO is basically the sensitivity of your sensor to light. So with flash photography and in the studio, I would suggest always keep it at ISO 100 because that is also the cleanest possible image that you will be getting. Now, flash power. Flash power is also dependent on a few things. So in order for me to properly demonstrate all these things that I'm talking about, I think I'll call in my wife Coco, who will be my subject or my test subject for today. Come on in, babe. All right, babe. So I will turn off now live view so I can see what I'm shooting. Basically, that's how it is composed. Now, if I turn on live view, it's just going to be completely black. So whenever I'm shooting, you can see my camera is just hunting because it can't see what I'm shooting. So I'll turn off live view. But if I turn off my flash, I'll take one shot now. That's the image that I'm getting. It's completely black. So therefore, we controlled our existing ambient light using the camera settings in my camera. Now, if I want to put it at 1.2 without any flash, that is the exposure that I'm getting. Okay. So you notice that just by adjusting my aperture and my shutter speed, I am controlling just my existing ambient light. But I want all my ambient light to be removed as of this moment. So maybe I will put it even just at 5.6, take one more shot, you can see it's completely back. So therefore, all the light that, will be, that you will be seeing now will be coming from my flash. So let me turn on my flash now. And once again, my flash is set at 1 fourth power and I will take one shot. So that's a properly exposed image using my flash at 1 fourth power with the existing ambient light that I have. Look what will happen now if I put it at 1.2 because aperture actually controls your flash power. If I put it at 1.2 now, it's overexposed. Ob very, very much overexposed. Again, I will turn off my flash. I am already getting existing ambient light plus the fact that I made my flash stronger because my aperture was set to wide open, which is what 1.2. So let's say once again, I want all my existing ambient light out. That's why I said earlier, we could do high speed sync. So let's do high speed sync. Let's turn it on and turn on my high speed sync. Okay. My high speed sync is on. I'll turn off my live view once again. So this is my actual exposure. I can now bring in my shutter speed to 1 over 6400. So I'll turn off my flash, turn off my flash, take one shot, completely black. So now I'm shooting at 1.2 at 1 over 6400. So no existing ambient light is still entering my center. So let me turn on my flash now. My flash power is still at 1 fourth power and look at what happened. Sorry, did it pop? No, one more. Let's turn on my, let's turn off my live view, babe. Can you move somewhere here? Okay. There. That's at one fourth power. Look at how weak the flash is. That's because of high speed sync. So let me now push it. Let's see if I can actually do it at full power. 
just with this F60RM, it's still underexposed. Therefore, my flash is not strong enough to shoot my subject at this particular, um, with this particular modifier and this particular flash distance. However, I can just cheat it a little bit and move it closer. If I move it closer, I will now make the flash stronger. That's your flash to subject distance. So, more or less, we're getting good exposure already. So maybe I can actually bring down my shutter speed a little bit lower. Let's see what will happen. It's still more or less black, so I think we can get away with that. And there we go. Properly exposed image at high speed sync at 1.2. Now, what does flash power have to do? As I said, you, you saw it already, that when I move the light closer, that my flash got stronger. If I move my light further away, it's going to make my light weaker. And you can see it's underexposed. So having my image underexposed with that one, we're already at full power. There's nothing more we can do except move the flash closer or not shoot at high speed sync. Since in this particular case, I don't really need to shoot in high speed sync because I don't need to bokeh the background. So let's put it back to 5.6. Okay. Go back within my flash sync speed, which is 1 over 250. Look what will happen now. I'm not going to touch anything except for my settings in my camera. It's overexposed because we are at full power and basically we just messed up everything. So this is how it goes to make life simpler. Whenever you've already set your existing ambient light to how you want it to be, don't adjust anymore your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture for studio work. Now, the only thing you need to do is adjust your flash power, which I can bring it back in closer to where it was originally. And look what will happen. If I do that, I will probably be overexposed, which I am now. So by being overexposed, all I need to do is bring down my flash power again. Let's bring it down to one fourth power. And we're getting proper exposure again. I think we're, actually we're good. Now, here's where it becomes a little co bit complicated if you want to play around with it. But everything has to be predetermined. Let me turn off my flash. So this is my existing ambient light. What if, let's say for example, I actually want my existing ambient light as part of my shot. I can do that. I will just use again my shutter speed, my ISO or my aperture. I can bring it down to 1.2. So this is my existing ambient light. I'll take one shot as is, or sorry babe. There we go. And then I can mix my flash to that of my existing ambient light. Maybe just to open up the shadows also. So I'll turn on my flash, but most likely this is gonna be overexposed again. Oops, sorry, I didn't turn on my flash. There, one, two. Overexposed, totally overexposed. Now, what, to sh what should I do? Should I be playing around with my settings again in my camera? No, what you should do is make your flash weaker. So I'll even put it down, let's say at 164th power, because remember, it is the aperture that actually affects your flash power. So right now, since I'm at 1.2, I can go down to 164th power if I want to, I think. Let's take one shot and look at that. I actually created a balance of existing ambient light to my flash. But again, that is something that I made sure was part of the vision of the shot. It's not like, oh, I'll do this and I'll do that without knowing what I'm doing. I specifically made sure to bring in my ambient light. And one thing that I don't like about bringing my ambient light and putting my flash here is look, I created a very flat image because I removed all the shadows, which I don't like. So. Maybe for, for purposes of this one, I think I can get away with it. Since I'm shooting at 1.2, I don't think I'm going to be, um, or sorry, sorry, I don't want to remove all existing ambient light. Again, I'll turn off my flash. I'll turn on my live view. I can actually go beyond my flash sync speed again, but just at about 1 over 800, just so that I can get a little bit of light on this side of her face to open up the shadows. Let me turn on my flash again. Turn off live view. And too weak. Yeah, obviously it was too weak because I brought it up, I put it at high speed sync. So now I have to increase my flash power. Maybe at one eighth power. Let's see. 
still too weak. I'll put it now at one half power there. So at one half power, they're a little bit over, babe. Can I bring it back? There. You notice that I am still getting contrast and I have some light coming from here, opening up the shadows. But in reality, it's not really necessary because if I just want to open up the shadows, I can always just use a reflector like this. But if you want to see how I actually use this light, you can always check out the video that came before this or I'll put the link in the description to see how I shot this beautiful wraparound light. So that is basically how I set my camera to control my existing ambient light and of course to control my flash power. Both lights should actually be harmonious if you want to use both existing ambient light and your flash or with studio work you could always just set your camera to remove all existing ambient light. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much again babe for doing this. Now if you have any questions with, I know this might have been a little bit too much but it is really just the basics of controlling your existing ambient light to your flash. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my images, you could also find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.